What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers, and break down what happened with big earnings that just came out, what's going on with the economic calendar, what you should be watching for as time progresses. But before I begin the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very soon. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with Tesla. Looking at Tesla, we have a nice uptrend that's trying to be respected as Tesla's trying to form this nice little wedge. But I do want everyone to be careful considering that we have a gap below on Tesla from the pre-market. So I'm going to break down some very important levels to watch for on Tesla. And also what the news is saying so far real quick. So firstly, I just want to mention that we basically just had earnings from Hershey's and just a couple of others that just came out. And then for after the market closes today, we have like Pinterest, Expedia, and just a couple of other small ones, not to mention PepsiCo for tomorrow. So earnings are coming out. They're very minor this morning. Hershey's did not have very good earnings based off what I'm looking at. It consolidated with net sales of $2.6 billion. It only increased 0.2%. Uh, their net sales decreased 0.1%. Their, uh, you know, they had a dollar and seventy per share diluted, a decrease of eleven point five percent. Net income was down, basically, if anything, and the adjusted EPS was also flat. So, they're basically telling us that for the full year, you can actually see it here. Net sales are only expected to grow two to three percent. They're looking at a higher cocoa and a higher sugar costs, and Hershey's is down as a result of this. Not the best outlook, not the best earnings. Everything was very flat, and their forecast is just not much growth. Not that great for them. Now, when it comes to the economic calendar, I just want to mention that right now we just had like Parkin giving a speech. I think he's just about finished. And then after that, we also had initial jobless claims that just came out at 218,000. Everything was very close to expectations. This was a little bit low, which is still showing some strength in the labor market. Besides that, at 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have the four week and the eight week bill auctions coming out. So watch for a little volatility at that time. And besides that, we just have Barkin from the Fed giving a speech around noon. So at 12.05 p.m., we have Barkin giving a speech. And that's pretty much it so far, at least for the markets. Barkin is known for being kind of in the middle, not too hawkish, not too dovish, just in the dead center. And that's very important because uh, he might not cause much volatility for the market, something too crazy, hopefully. So hopefully this data is not as impactful, doesn't dictate the market as much, and we can see the market just do its own thing. Now, when it comes to Tesla, there's an article coming out that's asking, can Tesla reach 400,000 sales a year with the Cybertruck? And this is basically based off production capabilities and such. So right now, uh, for, in Q4, Tesla noted that the Cybertruck production capacity was about 125,000 units per year. That doesn't mean that they're producing that much right now, but that is what the capacity is going to become. Now, on top of this, they're also mentioning that Musk was expecting sales to reach 150,000 units a year as time progressed. Uh, that is still a real possibility, but they need more time to get there. Now, based off other calculations, which are actually down here, uh, you could see that uh, compared to like Ford, which sold a little over 750,000 F series trucks in the US alone. And if the Cybertruck pulls 150 to 250,000 pickup buyers, they also mentioned that you could pull in another 150 to 250,000 buyers based off estimates if they're looking for an SUV, which has a mix of those. So the Cybertruck could be looking at 300,000 to 500,000 sales a year uh, as years progress, right? It doesn't have to be tomorrow. It doesn't have to be next year. As many, many years progress, it has the potential to reach that according to estimates, which could be very good for them. The midpoint of that is going to be 400,000. So that's something that's very bullish for the long term for Tesla. So this is a big article that came out this morning. So I just wanted to mention that. Now, as far as Elon Musk goes, this is making a lot of headlines. Musk reportedly uh, quizzed Tesla managers on which staff could be fired, according to reports. And the last time this happened to Twitter, it wasn't really the best. So what's going on with this? Basically, a lot of these companies have to reduce expenses. And they, they don't really do this by just cutting you know, employees' salaries by crazy, crazy extents, typically. Typically, they just lay off employees because they have to do what's best for their company. And in this case, this is what Elon Musk and the Tesla team could be hinting at 
you know, as soon as this news came out, Tesla sank like a rock before it got bought back up. So this is still making headlines. It's not really affecting Tesla as much. So when we open watch and see if there are any more headlines within the first 30 minutes, and we're going to see how it affects Tesla. Now, I just want to break down something very important. What do I see for the share price? Overall, Tesla is looking bullish. We have a nice uptrend, making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. But one thing that you could note is that Tesla is not going to just go straight up. Just like, excuse me, just, just like right here in this phase, Tesla was downtrending, but you could see, <coughs> excuse me, guys, I apologize. Uh, we, we had this range right here, right? We had 182 to 184 as support. And we had this resistance at 190 flat. So what do I see for Tesla? We have a potential bullish wedge that is attempting to form. We will have to see if Tesla could hold this. It all depends on if we hold this or not. So if we hold support right here, Tesla, if it manages to just continue to test 190, we're going to look for a breakout. That's like the more bullish case uh, for this thing. Let me just show you this. This is the really, really bullish case. We just break out like this, this, and then we just start pushing into like the 190s. Uh, we could see like 192 plus coming if we get a breakout like that, 192.5. But there's no guarantee it's just going to break out like that because we have this gap over here. That's one of the issues with Tesla. We have this gap here. We gapped up uh, from this point. We also have this gap from the pre-market. So if Tesla, if we're currently at 189, if we end up losing basically 188.5, Tesla is going to come down to fill this gap, so expect a little drop into the 187s. So it might invalidate this and just kind of shuffle a bit. So what do I think is more likely? Are we going to see the bullish case, or is it going to come down first? I'm thinking that it might actually come down a bit, fill this gap, kind of consolidate, and then try to bounce. So I find that to be a little bit more probable, if anything. So I think that even though we had this support trend line, Tesla might actually come down to fill this gap temporarily, okay? Could drop a little lower. Uh, we could be watching for 186 to 188 to be just tested as it shuffles. And it might just shuffle as the day goes on, just like how it did yesterday. So I think that's more probable. That comes down just a bit. Look for a little drop when we open. Uh, for the last four days, every time we opened Tesla, sold off, it sold off here, then bounced, sold off here, and then it bounced, it actually gapped out and bounced. And here it's it, it kind of like pumped, sold off, and then bounced. So we might see something similar. Uh, if we lose 188.5, look for a little retracement that's going to be coming. Uh, we're going to come down to at least 187, maybe even 186.5. If we lose that, then 184 and 182 are going to be our supports. So we might see a little sell-off right over here. So be very careful right over here at this zone. We're going to be looking for a bounce right after near 186. So we might sell off and then bounce and trade sideways as the day goes on in, in the 188. That is the most likely possibility. But if... If Tesla manages to just maintain the structure, then it's going to, of course, remain bullish. To be bullish, you need to see it break 190. If we break above 190, it's going to be pushing to 192 plus and eventually 194. That's how you turn bullish. Uh, it looks to me like there's going to be a risk of it coming down to fill this cap first and then shuffling instead before it tries to break out later. So watch it very carefully. We'll see if Tesla could break 190 or not. Um, and we'll see how it fills this gap first. I think it might fill this gap first and then shuffle before we get a nice little bounce. I want to make that as clear as possible. What about for SPY, SPY? I think that SPY is looking very strong. It's testing 498, but this is going to be a key resistance to be watching for. I said we might retrace a bit yesterday, and we got the retracement. We actually came down to 497 in the pre-market, and now we're going to be watching 498. This is a very tight resistance. If we break above this, we have to try to hold above it, then break 498.5. If we break that, 499 is coming, then we have 500 above that. If you reject off 498, look for a little retracement that's going to be coming back down to 497 and eventually 496.5. Overall, we're still kind of testing 498, kind of shuffling right now. So we'll have to see if we could break this or not. We're kind of shuffling, at least for the time being. So it's a very, very tough resistance. We've been stuck here for quite some time, and we'll have to see how it does. But once we get that break, and we continue to hold above 498.5, a bigger push is going to come. If we fail to do so, we just, we're just going to continue to shuffle in this range most likely. So watch that very carefully for SPY. 498 is going to be key. We could break it later, try to get close to 500, but wait and see just to be safe. You don't want to be uh, overly optimistic. You have to wait and see if it breaks. QQQ has the same technicals. We're testing 432. If we break 432, we have to hold above that, and then we could be pushing for 434. 
uh, not just 432, because we did shuffle above that. Uh, we also have this resistance above here. We need a clean breakout. We need to break above, get into the 433s, and I think our next target is going to be 434, basically. I don't think we'd stop there. Uh, also, watch resistance at 432. If we lose that, we're going to be coming back down towards 430 and eventually 429. So right now, it looks, it looks to me like it's going to just shuffle around here just for a bit and eventually try to break higher. Uh, we, we're going to be watching to see how it reacts to 432. So watch it carefully and then be very patient as time goes on. I think it might test it, shuffle a bit and eventually attempt to break out. But watch and see if we could get that break. Because what's good about NVIDIA is NVIDIA has a cup and handle like structure that's developing but we need to see if nvidia can make a full recovery let's see if nvidia can break 700 if we break above this and start pushing to 707 look for a breakout it's going to be pushing towards like 720 or so so we have a cup and handle like formation if this continues to pull up so far it's doing exactly what we expected i said yesterday nvidia might retrace towards 690 then maybe bounce we managed to hit 695 or 694 and now we're trying to bounce so we'll see if this holds if the cup and handle pans out on nvidia this is going to drag the QQQ up higher. So make sure you watch this, guys. Do we break 700? If we do so, watch 707 to 710. If that breaks, you know, NVIDIA is going to be pumping even more. If you reject of 700, watch it come down to 692, then 687. For now, cup and handle is what I'm going to be eyeing on NVIDIA. Let's see if this pans out. If it plays out, look for a push, and this is going to help the QQQ even more. And also the market. For Apple, we're just shuffling. We're stuck between... And 189 going back and forth, back and forth. It's very indecisive. To be bullish, you need to break 190.5 and start pushing. To be bearish, you need to see it lose 188. Otherwise, it's just consolidating and may continue to do so today. We'll see if Apple can try to break above 190, though, so be very patient. Otherwise, it's just stuck within this range. That's pretty much it for the video. So take care, guys. Make sure you're, you're very careful with Tesla. We have a support trend line to be watching for. We have to break 190 to turn bullish. And if we fail to break, that so we re return back down to 188.5 and lose it look for a little retracement that's going to be coming to the 187s and it might even come a little lower before it starts to shuffle and trade sideways as time progresses so watch and see do we get a little sell off and then trade sideways or do we end up getting that break above 190 it looks to me like it might retrace a bit and trade sideways first before anything uh, and then we'll see how this range holds up this has to remain in this range uh, don't forget that we have this range right, right here around 190 is resistance and 182 is support. So watch that carefully. And uh, I'm going to be very, very patient with this chart. All right, guys. So watch this formation. We'll see how Tesla does. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys very soon on the next one. Thank you and peace out.